The stone spheres of Costa Rica are completely anomalous, no one knows what they are and speculation on what they could be is rife. Spat out by volcanic eruptions, ancient cannonballs of the giants, or perhaps they were formed when plasma was exchanged between the planets in the solar system, whatever they are. They are amazing, and that's the one thing we can all agree on. An enigma from the past that always involves the gods, today we look at the history of this culture, wait till you hear this. On a small island of the Isle del Cano and the Dicus Delta in Costa Rica, there are over 300 petrospheres often referred to as dicospheres, and they have been attributed to the now extinct Dicus culture. According to Heritage Daily, the Dicus culture emerged in the valley of the Rio Grande de Taraba, where they established complex social, economic and political systems to govern their society. The settlement of the region began during the Sinancra period around 1500 to 300 BC in the form of sedentary, small and dispersed farming communities, which may have revolved around an egalitarian system with some levels of tribal organisation. Between 300 BC and 800 AD, the settlements developed a chiefdom structure that ruled over territorial divisions and they exchanged goods with neighbouring territories through a system of trading networks. And it's during this period that the earliest examples of sculpted stone appeared that include stone cylinders, barrels, spheres and depictions of characters. Between 800 and 1500 AD, the settlements grew into large communities around the alluvial lands of the Taraba River and its main tributaries. Constructing large structures using round-edged boulders, paved areas, burial sites, and circular or rectangular mounds with stone walls. The Dyquist culture reached an apex of cultural development during this period, with Dyquist artisans creating elaborate ceramic, bone and gold objects, and possibly sculpting stone spheres in important zones with settlements, or perhaps the stone spheres were always there. The stone spheres seemed to be placed in public plazas or along the approach to the dwellings of the ruling elite or the chieftains, or perhaps they were simply rolled into these positions. The Dicus spheres range in size from just a few centimetres to over 2 metres in diameter, and they are made from gabbro, which is a rock similar to basalt, with some examples of limestone and sandstone spheres. Perhaps they were sculpted by hammering boulders into a crude spherical shape using denser rocks, and they were then finished by using sand to polish the stone's surface. Curiously enough, with the arrival to the Spanish in the region in the 16th century, no mention was given in contemporary accounts by the European explorers of large stone spheres in the communities they encountered. By 1570, an expedition by Perifan de Ribera added to the mystery when he gave no indications in his reports of indigenous settlements, suggesting that by this time the large Dyquist communities had either abandoned their homes or had died off for reasons unknown possibly through infectious diseases introduced to them by the Spanish. And the stone spheres remained completely forgotten about until they were rediscovered in the 1930s by the United Fruit Company whilst clearing the jungle to make way for banana plantations. And it is completely unclear what they are, where they came from or how they could have been created. But what do you guys think about the mysterious stone spheres in Costa Rica? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.